So what we're trying to build is the UK's first Passive House Premium House. But what's Passive House Premium? So Passive House is all about being thermally efficient, energy efficient, and the building being airtight. And for Passive House Premium, you have to generate four times the energy you use. So it's like a miniature power station? It's exactly that. On a sunny summer's day, we'll be supplying over half the village with its electricity, just from this one house. That's amazing. But how much do you buy into this? Frankly, I'm not even sure I really knew what a passive house was when we embarked on this. But having learned, I think it's, it's admirable. Because you're the first to do this in the country, how do you know it's going to work? We don't. <laughs> this experimental powerhouse was originally designed by one local architect and modified by Duncan with a second architect. On a stepped site cut into the hill, Duncan will use shallow polystyrene trays filled with concrete to form insulated slabs and retaining walls. The continuity of the thick insulation under and around the building is essential to make the airtight and energy efficient house needed for passive house certification. A basement steel frame and concrete decks for the floor above follow. Then comes the structural insulated timber panels to form the superstructure. It'll be hard to assemble, huge and geometrically challenging, with three pitched roofs as asymmetrical as the eight glue lamp portal frames that Duncan's introduced. There's more insulation to come, plus a 23 meter wall of heavily shaded triple glazing to the south to drink in the sun's heat in winter. Duncan has to generate four times the energy he needs. The plan was to stack the 660 square meter roof with solar panels, but Duncan is set on a new solar fabric instead. His dream to be the UK's first passive house premium home rests on his solar roof generating four times the energy it needs. But the innovative solar fabric he's found might fall short by his current calculations. See here, the roof is a zigzag. So it's got six faces, and each one shades the one next to it. Right now, we either fail by about 2% or we pass by 2%. It really is on that knife edge. It is the key to whether we achieve Passive House Premium or not. I will be absolutely devastated if we don't get this. It is such a key part to the whole building. Tallinn, Estonia. Having failed to find a UK solar roof material that was beautiful, affordable and potent enough for his mini power station house, Duncan has flown here. The roof has proved more problematic than I thought. We did have a UK supplier and we've had some issues with them, and hence coming to Estonia to look at an alternative. Instead of the invisible solar fabric he'd wanted, the alternative is more obvious. Glass and metal roof tiles. They're about 60% cheaper. A great saving if they work. So this is your overall design of your roof yeah. surfaces and planes. You see we have all the trees that has to be there. Jan is calculating how much energy the roof will generate. I'm taking on a lot more risk in doing this, but there's a cost saving for me, um, which hopefully makes it worthwhile. Indeed, Duncan's already spent 800,000 pounds of his 1.2 million budget, and he's still building the basic structure. Finally, after spending a whole year designing his roof. Just a bit slippery up here today. <laughs> Duncan gets his Estonian solar panels, including the fitters. It's costing a hefty 118,000 pounds. The roof is the one thing that turns this from a normal passive house into passive house premium. So the roof is, is the really big innovative item on the build. It's so cutting edge, it's the company's first UK job. Got it. Gerd, who's in charge, is impressed with the scale. There will be 300 panels on this uh, roof, plus we have uh, one kilometer of cabling. I would say that this is the biggest roof that we have done. And yet, the Estonian team want to finish in just 11 days and be home for Christmas. It means working into the winter nights. And I say, lights. Like daytime or nighttime. Actually, two rows more, and then actually we can measure the power. With those lights, I would be able to get some kind of voltage out of it. We'll show it that we have still power and everything is correctly connected. This is a really exciting moment. I want to go up and, uh, and just see it. Let's see if it's 
children or something. Yay! God damn it, I was right. <laughs> Woo. Super happy. It's all working. That's the first, first power of the roof. It's a big thing. Can I finally charge my phone then? <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's what happens during daylight hours that's going to be vital. The installers take an extra week to finish. It's just so big. From then on, the owners is connecting it inside and to the grid. By spring, nearly three years in, it's up and running. I didn't think it would look this good. This just looks like a roof. They're invisible. And are they generating well? On a day like today, we're generating about 230 kilowatt hours. To give you an idea, a typical medium house uses about eight kilowatt hours a day. So that's a lot. You are the living embodiment of what excites me about self-build, which is that you are using innovative technology and making it work. <laughs>